Welcome to Crafty Chemist Designs. Today, I have a great technique to share with you. But first, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so you are alerted every time I drop a new video. On to the technique. What we're going to do is make this fun Miura card. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't, I don't really know. Um, I haven't heard it pronounced. I just have heard it. I've seen it. Um, and it is so amazing. I've never really seen anything like this. So um, I wanted to show you how to create this. And it's almost the end of the month and our new catalog is starting in a couple weeks. And I had made this sample for the catalog launch, but I never got a chance to do a live um, to show you how to create this. And I thought this is too good not to share. So I wanted to show you how to make this tonight. It's a could be a fun Valentine's Day card, hopefully not too late, but I also think it would be a nice Mother's Day card or um, even an Easter card if you do the, you know, make the coloring um, towards that theme, you know, Mother's, this would be okay for Mother's Day, Easter, maybe I would do yellows and, and blues and, and so on. So I am using the um, collection of the month called Sweet Memories. This is the collection that's on the front of our current catalog. Um, so here it is. And you can see I used um, this paper here. And then the coordinating cardstock that goes with it, I used the, um, the mulberry. And this time I might throw on some of the, the die cuts. I didn't in my sample. And then I might throw in the um, stamp of the month for February. I didn't have this when I made my sample. This is before I, I got this. Um, so I used an older stamp set, but I think I'm going to use this one this time around. Okay. So let me show you how to create this. It's really easy. I do have a, um, blog post that shows the um, cutting guides and the materials that you need. So the first thing we need is whatever cardstock you're going to use for your base page, okay? So you can see what it, it looks like here. I've used the mulberry to give you an idea about what it is. Um, and you need to make it, it's 10 and a half wide. Let me get my ruler out. But it is, you need a piece that is ten and a half, ten and a half wide and five and a half tall. Okay? And so this will fit into a an A2 size card. Right? Because this is it's five and a half. Um you have five and a half tall and it's only three and a half wide so it will definitely fit into an A2 size card. What I love about this card is you know if, if somebody gets this in the mail it looks beautiful it looks, but it looks kind of normal and then when they open it up it's like shebang look at how cool this is. <laughs> it's the surprise that I think I love and um, it doesn't it doesn't really stand up so Okay, so we need 10 and a half, 10 and a half wide by five and a half tall. Okay, and I think I'm going to do mulberry again. Okay. Okay, so let's cut, I'm gonna cut this at five and a half. And then ten and a half. Okay. So this is going to be the card base. And then with the coordinating card stock, you also need a piece 
that is one by 11. And this is going to be the belly band. Okay. You can see I've made, made the, this out of the belly band. You don't 100% need a belly band, but you can see how it, um, it doesn't close all the way. Although you can put it into an envelope, no problem. But I think the belly band just kind of finishes it off. That's why I didn't put any decorations on the front except for the sparkles because the belly band had the, the stamp. Okay, um, now we're going to score this. And I'm going to use my scoring board. And um, so you want to score it at three and a half and then seven. Okay, or you can flip it around and do three and a half again. It depends if you're using a scoring board or if you're using a um, a uh, scoring blade on your, your Fiskars or whatever. Okay. We're going to need this again, so don't put it too far away. Okay, now we're going to fold this, and I want to show you how it looks. So you want to fold this piece back or a mountain fold like this. Okay, and then you want to put this piece, this side, is going to be a valley fold, okay? Okay, so once you fold it, it kind of looks like a backwards Z. Okay, I'm going to just burnish this a little bit with my bone folder. Okay, so you want it to be like this. Okay, now we're going to have to mark down because we're going to have to make this fold here and then this fold here and what you need to do is measure down one and seven eighths and make a little tick mark there okay one and seven eighths okay and that the seven eighths is one and seven eighths is this like medium line um, between you know the three fourths and the the two. So between one and three fourths and two, you got that medium line. That's seven eighths. Okay, and then you also want to measure up one and seven eighths. Okay, from the bottom on this side. And just make a mark and you want to make it small enough small enough so you can erase it later I don't know if you can see I've got a mark here and then I've got one I've got one here okay so now what we're going to do and I'm not going to I'm not going to draw it but what you're, you're going to do is you're going, going to score from here down to here so from the top left corner down to the, the tick mark that you made, and then from this corner down to the tick mark that you made, okay? So one thing you can do is if you fold it like this, and on your scoring board, um, you know what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my Sharpie I should have maybe done this before. And um, I don't know if I want, I'm gonna do it on the six. I'm just gonna draw a line down on the six, just so I can see. Okay, so what you want to do is, I'm going to score from this top left corner to this, this tick mark here. So what I wanna do is line my little tick mark up with this black line or the six inch line here, it doesn't matter where you do. And then this corner here. So I wanna line those up. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm going to use my scoring blade to score down. And you want to kind of be, on this one, you want to be a little bit hard because you're going through two layers. Okay, you see how I went through both layers and it scored there and it scored there. Okay, so I'm going to erase that mark. So you want to do the mark in pencil. Now let's do the side again. Okay, I don't know if you can see, can you see the scoring mark here? Okay, so we're going to do that on this side. So on here, we're going to go from the bottom right to the tick mark, and then from the tick mark to um, the score mark here. Okay? So again, we're going to line up where I have the tick mark with this black line I just drew, and then um, this score mark also I'm going to line up. Okay? Just so you can see it. Okay. Are we clear on which ones we're supposed to score? And then I'm going to score right down that line. Okay, and again, you want to do it kind of heavy because you're scoring through two layers. Okay. So we've got everything scored. Okay, now this top one, we need to fold back, fold backwards. And it should just kind of pop backwards. Okay, see how that's kind of folded backwards? Okay, and then I would burnish it to make the, the folds. folds good. Now see how that See how easy that was? Now on this one, we're going to fold this one in, so up. We're gonna fold this one up. This one went back. This side's gonna go up. Okay, so let's fold this up. There we go. And then again, burnish it a little bit so that it's... Okay, now you look how easy that was. Now, and now you've got an amazing card. I mean, we're almost done, guys. Really, we're almost done. Okay, so you see how easy that was? Again, on my blog post has the directions, the, um, the markings, but this piece is 10 and a half. Ten and a half wide. I scored it at three and a half and at seven. And then I drew a little tick mark down here at one and seven eighths down from the top on the three and a half inch score mark. And then I made it one and seven eighths inch up from the bottom on the seven inch score mark. And then I just folded these ones down and then these ones up. Okay. So now all we have to do is decorate it. So I'll show you how to cut those pieces. Now one thing that you want to think about, um, when it's closed, the top of this, the inside, is going to show. You can see how this part pops back. And so the top of this part shows, and then the bottom shows on the front of the card. So I, I wanted mine to be the same here and here and I made the inside different paper because you don't you don't see that okay if you made this different paper than the front you're just going to see a little bit of that showing so you might like that look too right okay so let's um decorate this um you need some paper again like I said I'm using the sweet memories paper and I have, I could do this one. I didn't do this one before. And then for the inside, 
So here's the two choices. I'm going to try this one just to be different. And then for the inside, I will do, um, I'll do this one. So what you need is three pieces. that are three and a quarter wide and five and an eighth tall, okay? So I'm going to cut, um, what did I say, three and a quarter. Let's cut this piece three and a quarter. And then um, I'm, I'm gonna make two pieces that are five and an eighth. And so five and an eighth, just to, Remember, this middle part here, the, the middle size between the five and the five and a quarter, that's the eighth mark. So let's do five and an eighth. And then another one, five and an eighth. Okay, so that's gonna be the front and the inside like what I had the periwinkle paper. Now you can make um, one of these, you can make the center one white, like white daisy, if you want to um, write a note on it or if you want to stamp something. You can make this white daisy. I made it all pattern and then I, I stamped an image and um, put it here. So this is like on, this is taped on top, so it's, you know, dimensional. But depending on what kind of paper you chose, um, you might want to put something white here or you could just stamp right right on to, to this. Um, so let's do this one. You need three and a quarter. And then five and an eighth. Move it down just a little bit because I want this whole pink flower here. Okay. So there we go. I've got my three pieces. Now again, you can, if you want something to be white daisy so that you can write or stamp on it, you know, go ahead. Although if you make this white, it is going, this, the top part is going to show, okay? Okay? So you need three pieces that are three and a quarter and five and an eighth. Okay, so now this one, you can see this is my piece that's three and a quarter by five and an eighth. What I'm going to do is measure down on the right side, one and seven eighths again, and mark it. So let's do that here. One and seven eighths on the right side. And I'm going to make a little tick mark. Okay. And now I'm going to cut it from the top left to the tick mark. Okay. Okay, so see that? So that's going to fit onto this, this piece here. So let's adhere this big piece down because you have to do something to the triangle. Okay. This will fit really nicely with a little bit of space around the edges. Okay. More than I like. Okay. Now this piece you can see is too too big really to fit onto that. So you need to trim this piece a little bit so that 
And the little triangle piece, what you need to do is cut off a half of an inch on this flat side. Okay, so put it up against your cutting uh, Fiskars trimmer or whatever trimmer you have, and then cut off a half inch on this side. So see how I, I cut that? Okay, now it will fit onto your Onto your piece here. Okay. So let me. Oh, shoot. You know what? I was going to do the. Um... I meant of this to be in the center like it was here. But that's okay. Luckily, my piece on the back was is the same okay um so now this one let's do the same thing except here we have to cut this bottom corner out so what i'm going to do is measure one and seven eighths inch up from the bottom left here and it's really easy um if you just look at how if you just use this as your guide, if you forget how you're supposed to cut it, just put this piece down on here and say, okay, I need to cut, you know, from, from down here to, to the corner. Okay. So use this as sort of your template. Okay. So I'm going to cut from here, this tick mark to the corner, line it up on my trimmer. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then similarly, we're going to have to cut a half inch off of this, this side over here. So I'm just gonna do it while my trimmer's out. So I need to cut a half inch off of this side. So I'm going to turn it so that the right angle, the right triangle is up and cut that half an inch off. Okay, so then we can put this down here. Let's adhere these pieces. Oops, I'm out of, I'm out of adhesive, let me. Let me change. It really wouldn't be one of my lives if I didn't run out of adhesive. Okay. So this is going to go in the top again, center it in that space. And this rectangle started off at three and a quarter and five and an eighth. And now I'm going to put this one here and it fits perfectly now that I cut the half inch off. Okay. There you go. Now let's move on to the middle. The middle is also three and a quarter by five and an eighth, but on this one, you're going to have to do a double, um, a double cut, okay? And again, this is a place where maybe you want to um, do a white daisy if you want to stamp um, on this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark one and seven eighths from the top left. And then one and seven eighths. So here's it's from the top left and from the bottom right. And I just noticed I didn't erase these here. Don't forget to erase these marks. Okay, one and seven eighths from the bottom. 
There we go. So this one I'm going to cut from the top right to the tick mark. Okay. Okay. And then I also need to cut from the bottom left to the tick mark that I made here. So I'm lining them up with the track on my cutter here. Okay. So let me erase the marks you don't want to make the marks too big but you want to be able to see them so okay now these are going to be too big to fit straight on because that it fits exactly like right in here so what you want to do is cut a half inch off of the long the the side here I'm going to cut a half inch off and I'll show you let's do it with this one first so I'm going to cut this half inch off and to do that, I have to flip it over so that this top square can be here so it lines up good. Okay. There we go. So see, I cut, I cut a half inch off. Okay, let's do, I couldn't put those back together. Okay, let's do this one now. Um, I want to cut a half inch off of this side here where the right triangle is, the, the short side, we want to cut a half inch off of that. Okay. And this was the bottom part. And then this was the top part. Okay, so now let's try and adhere these down. And adhere this. Okay. So just fit that right into the center. Now you can see how nicely this fits in here. Now that we cut it down a little bit, because you want there to be a little bit of a border around it. That's why we cut it down. That's a little bit, it feels a little bit crooked to me. There. And now this one looks like it angles up. Can I get that? Can I reposition that one? Okay. I want this to be kind of a straight line going across. There we go. Okay. Now the last thing we have to do is down here is adhere this one. So now it's all decorated. And even though it's not how I was thinking about it, I like it. I like it. Okay, so now let's make the belly band. So remember, we cut a strip that was 11, a one inch by 11. And what I do is I usually fold up my card, put the belly band around it from behind and then, um, you know, you can get it to where you like it. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna cut this about right here. Okay, and then this piece is going to come over and you want it to overlap. I like it to overlap about an inch or something like that. So I'm just going to cut it like about here. Okay, so now you see um, it's gonna hold it close. You want it to be tight enough to hold it, but not too tight that you can't slide it on and off, right? So you want it to be a little bit, you know, looser. So don't make it too tight, okay? And then I'm going to adhere this. I usually like 
like to use score tape when I do a belly band because, um, you know, I feel like it, it takes a lot of, um, stress, you know, opening and closing it. So I want it to be super strong. So I'm going to put kind of two pieces here and hopefully that'll be enough overlap. Ew, look, I, I put too much. Put too much. Let me try it again. I'm only going to put one, one strip on my belly band of uh, score tape. And by 11. Let's try again. Let's make this about right there. And then this one about right here. I really thought I had more space there. I think I do have more space on this one. I was going to put one, but I left a little bit extra overlap, so. There's one thing I want to show you about the belly band once I get this on here. Okay. Again, we want it to be loose enough to move but tight enough to keep it closed. So that, that's a good, a good spot. I want to show you, see the back here has, you see how there's like the cutout from the fold? So you wanna make sure that your belly band is above this point, cause it, it can get stuck on there. You see how it can, one is, is not too bad, but there is this little bit of a ridge there, so you want to kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so now we have to decide what to put on the front. I was going to use um, I was going to use this this stamp, but now that I put a design on the front, I don't know, should I still use that, guys? Let me see. I've got some of these stamped already. So I was gonna do this one. Let me know, let's see what you think. This is from the um, February stamp of the month and I really love these. I think I've shown these ones before. This is, this is this one here that I colored in. I really love this. It might be okay. I didn't want the front to be that busy. But I started taping it down wrong, so we're, we're just going to go with it. Another thing I could do is put a um, oval around it. We'll see what we think. I did not get the um, sample of the month with a thin cut, so I'm cutting it out. It's, it's so nice now that our thin cut, or our sample the months a lot of them have the option of getting the thin cuts with them so you still get your sample the month either for free or for five dollars depending on whether or not you're a vip um and then you just pay for the thin cuts extra i mean it's one cost but the cost is based on you getting it the stamp of the month free or five dollars. But this one isn't too bad to cut out. So I was gonna put this here, but what do you think? I think that's too busy with just that. 
So I think what I might do is let's let's see how it looks with um, this little um, oval. This is a little oval. Oh, that's that's a little bit too big, I think. I think this oval is going to be too big. One last option. is one of the um, like one of these let's see I mean, I'm not going to do use this one but well that's that one's too big I might just have to put that that on there this is the other one that I was thinking That's not too bad. Do you think that breaks it up enough or it's not even worth doing? I could do that in periwinkle. What do you guys think if I cut this out in periwinkle and then put the flowers on top? Not that I would put this color, but yeah, see that one's too, that one's too big. Try this one in white or in a periwinkle. Okay, is this piece white enough? Yes, it is. Okay. I think the front, the front uh, pattern paper should be fairly um, uh, not busy. You know what I mean? Okay. Let's try this. Let's see. And then here's the flowers. Okay, yeah, I think that that's okay because it gives it a little bit of a place to put your to put your eye. Okay, and before I put that on there, let's just color this real quickly. Um, and I think I'll do. Let's try this one. This is called Rosy Blush. And I'll just do it. I, I really like these um, colored pencils. I know that these flowers probably are not um, that color. I'm going to make the centers a little bit. Let's try and give it a little bit of a purple, a purple tone to go with the mold, to go with the periwinkle. And these ones, this is from the Bright and Vivid, but the pink was from the Perfect Portrait. So I am going a little bit harder and darker in the center of the flower, and then a little bit lighter around the edges. And I'm, I'm trying not to go, I'm trying to go fast so that you don't have to be bored watching me color this but you can take some time these do blend pretty nicely with each other okay so I'm going darker around where that the purple is and then a little bit lighter around the edges Another thing I could have used the um, I could have used the tri-blend markers if you have some of the tri-blend markers 
or some of our watercolor paints. I actually watercolored, painted some of my um, Easter card things just before I went live. I was coloring those. Okay, and then let's make kind of a shade green for the leaves that will kind of match. Um, I think that the, the pine is the the color. That's a little bit dark, I think. Let me use a scrap of this to okay this i'm using um metal metal green there is green i don't know if you can tell in here a little bit not much Little bit of a spring vibe to it with this green. This is very much a spring green. It was really nice weather here today. What do you, what about where you are? I actually when I was leaving work, I got in my car with my coat and everything and before I drove away I'm like, I gotta take this coat off. It is so hot outside okay and then I think I'm going to make a little bit darker for these other you see how there's two different kinds of leaves so I'm gonna make these other leaves since they're smaller and thinner I think I can make them a little bit darker and it it won't be too dark since it's just really thin I'm in love with these new pencils though what I love about them most is they're inexpensive. I think it, one box is six ninety five, which you know I bought. I bought the Tri Blend marker pack, and I used my half price item on that, and it was ninety nine dollars. Um, and so the regular price is one ninety nine. So you know those are much more expensive. Okay. Okay, now you see, the reason why I want something here is to sort of um, cover up the seam. So I'm going to, you know, put some adhesive down. Maybe I might put a, might put one little strip of score tape because, again, this is going to, it's gonna get a workout and I don't want it to come off. I'm centering this on here and then I'm just going to adhere this down. You do want to keep in mind that the edges the edges stick off a little bit. Like the so you don't want you don't want this to be on the stuck to stuck to there. Okay, so it does it comes on and off pretty good. So it's not too tight. And I think that, that looks pretty good. Um, I did bring a, a little bit of sparkles. Like I had on this card. Let's just put a few of these down. This is a stamp of the month from... Um, I don't know, like November, maybe November. So this is an old stamp of the month, but like I said, I did not have the February stamp of the month yet. So I only put three here, here I put five. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is put something on the inside. Now again, I, since these are so busy, I really, See here how I put a flower. This is from the um, the Valentine set. Um, so I could put something here. Maybe I'll put something something there. Um, one thing that I was going to use were these new um, word strips. But 
But you know, I think, let's see if this circle, does the oval, the oval doesn't fit there. Doesn't. I could put, but see, if you put something here, it's going to show, it's going to show up. So you want to watch what you put there. You, you could make this white so you can sign and stamp on, stamp on that. I don't know, I might do that, guys. Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. I'm going to take this off. And it's okay that some of this is showing because I'm going to be putting the white over it. And then I'm going to stamp on this before I glue it down. I wanted to use the um, uh, Grateful For You friend. Because I wanted to send this to a friend. First time that I used it. Now this um, this is on an angle, so make sure when you stamp it, you keep in mind that it's a. It, you see how it's a trapezoid. So if you want it to look straight, you have to make it. So I'm going to put it like this right here. Okay, I think I'm going to be happier with this. Now let's adhere this down. Because I don't want it to be too busy, which I think it kind of was going to be. Okay. And this you don't see, because it... it um, it's on the inside, so it's, it's okay that it's white. And then I'll sign it, sign it right here. Okay. Okay, so there we go. We're finished with this Miura card. Okay, there we go. This is the, the new one. And then this is the one I did as my sample. If you like any of the products you see in this video, go to thecraftychemist.ctmh.com. I have a Facebook business page, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I do live demos every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time. I also have a Facebook group, called The Crafty Chemist Presents CTMH that I invite you to join. You can share any artwork. I also have an Instagram and TikTok, Crafty Chemist Designs. And you can learn more about the measurements and such on this card on my blog, periodicallycrafty.blogspot.com. Thank you.